legend of ten because of my original description of the word legend. We're mapping the music, mapping the topography of the music, but mapping the emotional terrain of the music as well, abstractly, so to speak. It's it's a story, but it's not a narrative. It's the story of the music, and music has a story. It's an emotional story, and there's a journey, and we're mapping that journey, the emotional journey as well as the topographical journey of the music. Um, it's called The Legend of Ten. There are ten dancers in it, and it is a legend which is a record of the, set, the numbers of weeks we spent together as a company creating it. And in the course of the action, each dancer introduces themselves, they're revealed by the group, and um, there are central moments um, for a, a couple, and one of the reasons is that our newest member a year ago was Jenna, and she came late to rehearsals, about a week late, and so she entered the dance late, and that began separating her, because she was new in the company, separating her role in the company, as people got to know her, and by the end of the dance, she's fully integrated into the ensemble. But it's, it's a story in an abstract way, the story of 10 dancers working together in community as colleagues to create a vision of music, a way to see the music, a painting of music, in this case, a map of music. Um, there are lots of ways to go about making dances, and that's what I wanted to talk about to the students today tonight, is ways of making a dance. And that begins to segue into the relationship between the dancer and the choreographer as creative partners and uh, the dancers will eventually engage in this discussion as well. So uh, last night, for those of you who attended last night's conversation, began to talk about some of the ways that a dance gets made that are somewhat unexpected or less than, than apparent. Uh, there's the traditional way of the choreographer getting up and making up the steps, the dancers learning those steps, and then constructing a dance that way. But there are other methods of creating dance or getting dance to happen. Uh, occasionally, I have evolved methods of sitting down and describing dance to the dancers and using their reactions as the material for the dance and then sculpting their reactions into, into the finished piece. Uh, and a good deal of description went into making this dance. And, and we may back up and I'll show you a couple of sections that result of description rather than my getting up and showing dance steps. Now that happens largely with dancers that have a shared vocabulary, and this mosquito's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that happens with dancers who have a shared vocabulary, who've worked together for a long time. Sometimes it happens because a dancer has a natural, intuitive sense of responding to my description. And because I look for dancers who are movement poets, they bring poetry to the proceedings, and they know how to read the music with their bodies. Sometimes I tell them to play the music on their body. Um, one of the ways uh, I've described dance occasionally while making this dance, I have also asked dancers to contribute material occasionally, not by describing it so much as asking them to do steps according to certain um, adjectives or ways of describing <coughs> stuff. For instance, we have a passage of music and I, I come up with a series of words that emulate or embody that moment in the music. And then I ask dancers individually to contribute one step in response to those words. For instance, I might be looking, I might be using words like slurry, um, eliding, um, dropping, uh, um, uh, gravity. And, and as they describe those, they give me physical reactions to those words. Well, words and dance are very, very close. Uh, dance steps and words have a very close relationship. And those of you who don't dance, who don't know the inside workings of dance in the studio, you might be surprised to know that there's a great deal more time spent talking than dancing, particularly in the beginning. And then as the process gets further and further, more and more dance begins to occupy the time of the day. But there's a great deal of conversation, a great deal of articulating very carefully the language of the dance because there's a physical response to language. So can um, Brian and Kate, can you show me this phrase, please, in the dance? It's an example of steps the dancers contributed. They can see over the chairs well enough. You don't have to go this way. <coughs> it's, uh, it's this phrase. The dancers made up these steps for me according to my description. 
one step per dancer. I was looking for water. I wanted to reflect the water aspect of the music. Thank you, Dave Ryan. It's a short phrase, but we use words like slurry and water and ebbing and gravity, and, and there are lots of phrases like that in the dance. Musical chairs. <laughs>